All right, today I'm going to talk about my Gibson bases. I was going to sell some or whatever, but I'm keeping them all. That's just the way it goes. You know, I said I was going to sell everything. Whatever I sell, I sell. You know, people want something and they really make me a good offer. I'll let it go. But let's let's talk about a couple of them. All right, so first one is the Ripper Fretless. It has an ebony fingerboard, which is kind of cool. It's very hard to get that on any instruments today. It's, it's either rosewood or, and that's even hard to get. They have a pofrero, is that what it's called? I really hate that wood. I hate the way it looks. But anyway, this is the Fretless Ripper. I maybe got it about two years ago. Recently, the bridge pickup died. I thought I could have it repaired and rewound but I could not. But fortunately, Seymour Duncan makes replacement pickups for Gibson Ripper bases. It's, you could never tell the difference. And the guys at Best Base Gear, I don't know if you know about them, but they had them there in stock. Actually, they had a full set, but for me, they did me a favor. They pulled out the bridge pickup, which is all I needed. And I very much appreciate that. It's not the first time I, I did business with them. I've, I've, over the years, I've uh, purchased some stuff from them. So best bass gear. Thank you for making me be able to play this bass again. All right. So next is the fretted ripper. This is maple. Maple, maple fingerboard, maple body. works perfectly okay so those those are the rippers now the rd this thing weighs a ton but it's it's probably the coolest bass that i own sonically visually and it works it's very complicated i'm not going to go into all the controls but comp there's a compressor thing in here there's a expansion it's called which makes the note like swell out really don't use those features but other than that it acts like a regular passive uh, active bass with active treble and bass and all that it's i don't know what it's made out of but man it's heavy it really is and these days heavy instruments i can see why guys are always concerned about weight it's something i never used to be concerned with but when you get to be my age and you have to play four hours. You don't want to have something that weighs like 16 pounds. But this bass also, I always feel like I have to really stick my hand out to play like an F or notes on the first fret here. But it's a small price to pay for how cool this bass sounds and looks. Paul Page likes this bass every time I, I bring it out. Okay, what else? Here's, I forget what the name of this one is, the DC Junior Bass. It was a, a 2011 reissue from Gibson. It's pretty much cut the same at old classic Gibson design. It's, it's a pretty good bass. Um, I love the color of it. I got it from because it matches my Columbia University baseball cap. Really, that's the only reason I, I bought it initially. <laughs> But Charles Lambiazzi said it's a solid bass, so I, I definitely picked it up. I thought about messing around with the pickups, but I'm just going to leave it stock in case I ever do want to resell it. What else? Uh, my Gibson Les Paul Triumph bass. Short scale basses are very popular these days. And uh, this is another heavy bass. Many people think this is the best bass Gibson ever made. I mean, those are subjective claims, but it's a great instrument. You get a lot of sounds out of it. And uh, I don't think I'll be selling this anytime in the future. It's it's very yellowed now, which a lot of people like. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I think I'd like it pure white, but that's just the way it looks now. Nothing I could do about it. The EB-3 as used by Jack Bruce, Andy Frazier, and a lot of guys, even Charles Lambiazzi. 
you have to have one in, in your collection guys like us collection if you're at least you know 50 to 60 you know what this is and you probably own one it's definitely it's good to have around it shakes all the dishes in the house when you when you when you play it oh what else did i what did i not cover oh yeah the thunderbird another cool vase Another base that you really, you know, you got to stick your, it feels like you're really sticking your arm out and it's sort of neck heavy. So you have to learn to put your forearm on it. You, you figure out ways around the design of the instrument that makes it a little tough to play. But it's, you know, it, it's a necessary evil. If you want to play something that looks like this, it's not going to balance right. It's going to be neck heavy, you know. Okay, so, oh, the last one, I almost forgot this. my EB2. This is a great base. I, I had three hollow bodies. I have, uh, th I have this one. I had the Starfire, which I sold to my good friend John, and I have the Lakeland. Now someone was inquiring about this, and it's hard for me to want to sell these things, because let's, let me just refresh your memory. I'm not selling these bases because I'm getting evicted from my apartment or I have to pay a loan shark. I'm going to be 60 years old, and I don't want to leave my niece with 50 bass guitars to bring to Guitar Center to sell for $300. You know what I'm talking about? So I'm trying to get rid of some while I'm here, and this has been a, a very good mental exercise. I, I think I've gotten rid of three or four basses already. But this is a really great, this is EB2, they make one called EB2D, I think it has a bridge pickup. But this is very clean. Mine is like it looks like a brand new instrument you know the see see these often on the on the you on a reverb with like broken headstocks and people are still asking a lot of money for them so those are my gibson bases uh i uh, hope that you liked it and uh, my presentation that is and i'll see you soon